Open up a tab, grab a seat, and pour a pint. It's time for the Beer Guys Radio Show. You want free beer? Go to the brewery. Dedicated to the art, science, and enjoyment of craft beer. Yeah, what's wrong with the beer we got? Now, here are your hosts, Tim Dennis and Aaron Williams. And welcome to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We are radio for the local craft beer movement, broadcasting from our Atlanta studios at AM 920 The Answer. I'm Aaron Williams. And I'm Tim Dennison. We've got Field Hopper to Brian Hewitt in the studio with us. Brian, how you doing? I am doing well. Good, good, good. We've got a great show today. Absolutely. Moving gears a little bit, Aaron. We are talking cider this week. That's right. And we have uh, Andrew Wheeler, who is the co-founder and ciderist. And we have Justin Pierce, who is also a co-founder of Treehorn Cidery up in Marietta. Yeah, Thanks thank so much for joining yeah, us. We thanks appreciate for it. Having us. Definitely, definitely. We'll also have a recap of a busy week in beer, including a Creature Conference collaboration, a free you of Roswell's newest brew pub, and we'll have a little bit of homebrew talk with Gary Glass, the director of the American Homebrewers Association. Lots of stuff going on. Uh, you and, and Brian always seem to stay busy during the week. We um, do. While I, you know, keep it on the home front. There's but, a lot uh, of beer to drink out there. It, it is. It, so. is a, it is a tough job, but someone's got to do get it. Out of, have you thought of just getting rid of the kids? And, you know, that'd free up a lot more drinking time. We'll, we'll have to talk off air. I don't okay. want yes. to get in trouble. No comment. Anything. Exactly. No comment. No comment on that one. So, but, but uh, yeah, so we did, uh, we did a little traveling around, check some things out. Last week, you know, we taped early so this uh, we went to the Stay Gold can release. That was we awesome went over there. Yeah, and, uh, check that out. We got to hang out at uh, at Killer Mike's Barber Shop for a little pre party off of Edgewood, and then yeah. we went down to uh, the the Sound Table. You didn't make it down to the Sound Table. I didn't make table, it all the way you? down there. Like I said, I mean, you know, kids got in the way. I had to be yes, home at a decent yes. hour. But uh, yeah, no, it was fun. I hung out in, uh, on a barber shop at Edgewood Avenue. Yeah. Something I thought I would really never do, but right. uh, it was great. We uh, we hung out, we drank some uh, some new creature comforts that stayed gold cans, and uh, had a good time. Had a good time with a lot of folks. That's that's fantastic beer right. too. Down so. to Georgia Beer Garden for a little while. Yep, so we did had that a good too. Time with that, and my timing was perfect because I showed up at the barber shop after Killer Mike left. Yes, and then I left the sound table before they did a surprise set there. I know. From the Jules, so. I, heard, I heard that like that's they didn't the get on goes, until midnight, man. and I would have wouldn't have made it anyway. I that was late, several so. hours yeah. gone by then. Also did a little Athens trip last week. Weekend. We checked out Academia Brewing over there, new brew pub in Athens. Uh, some tasty beers on there. They've got a lot of stuff in barrels. They said they'll have a big barrel program coming soon. Had run over to Creature Comforts to pick up some more of the Stig Old cans. Yes, thank you. And you know what? They've got an Athena bar there where they take uh, different syrups and infusions with their Athena Berliner Weiss. Nice. It's one of the greatest things ever. Definitely. Yeah, they do a good job with that uh, Berliner. That's good. And it was the white chocolate moo that we did. We did stop by Terrapin. I hadn't been there in a long time, so we went over there and uh, got a little white chocolate moo So And you guys are all over the place. Man. And then uh, checked out From the Earth Brewing, like you mentioned. Went over there, new brew pub that's he officially opened yesterday in uh, Roswell. And uh, food and beer there are excellent. You know, I get grief because I seem to hype everything up. I just talk a lot about the things I really like. Mm-hmm. So if I really hype something up, it's because I really love it. And uh, brand new breweries, I'm usually kind of forgiving a yeah, brand new brewery. Of course, yeah. If you put something out and it's not flawed, there's no issues, I'm like, okay, once you dial in your system and stuff, I expect, you know, some some good things here. Uh, but the beers are genuinely good there now, mm-hmm. and the food is just phenomenal. You, you know, you got, me drool with all the pictures you used to send man, me. They've got Kevin Rathman is a culinary advisor and investor there. They have Kevin McNerney, who's a co-founder from Sweetwater and a brewmaster at Five Seasons Prado. He's a brewing advisor there. Uh, Tim Stevens, the owner, many years in the Atlanta fine dining scene, mm-hmm. so... A good pedigree. There. Definitely. And we, uh, one to check out. So go up there and check it out. Excellent. Of course, we had them on the show a few weeks ago. So if you want to see that interview or hear that interview, go to a Beer Guys Radio uh, on your podcast app and it's back there as well. So while you are busy eating uh, or eating wonderful, amazing food and drinking right. amazing beer and other things that from the earth, it was Halloween for me. And it you were was, getting free candy, right? I was getting free. It was awesome. Yeah. Yes. That's, the, that's the, again, it's one of the great things about having three kids is that they get triple the candy. Mm-hmm. And then I can come back and I can sort it out because it's the parent tax, which is That's always right. key. So, That's right. But, uh, but you know, you have to enjoy some stouts with that as well. Um, you know, I had that uh, Burial uh, Jackie O's collab the, uh, the, with the uh, High Falls, I think is what it's called, uh, okay. the, the Black Falls uh, collaboration. That was a good stout. And um, because, again, it was a little bit chilly out there, it just kind of felt like a little stout night uh, for me, too. And uh, enjoyed the heck out of that. And uh, another stout that I enjoyed, too, is the Sinner's Sun from Sweetwater. Right. Uh, that's brand new. And we've got that in studio, too. So uh, a little coffee, bourbon barrel. Stout that makes things some delicious. of my favorite things. Exactly. Speaking of favorite things, let's check out this week's Truck and Taps beers of the week. 
Crack open a cold one. It's the Truck and Tap Beer of the Week. Woo-hoo! Craft beer and food trucks in downtown Woodstock. Truckandtap.com. I think we probably should rename it Truck and Tap Ciders of the Week. Ciders yes. of the Week. Beer and Ciders of the Week. Right? Exactly. We've got so, everything. Absolutely, man. So we've got a lot of good stuff. We pre-game today with a couple from uh, Iron Marger, who we would like to welcome as our, our newest sponsor Woo-hoo. of the Beer Guys radio show. But we uh, we enjoyed their Damascus IPA and mm-hmm. the Quench Pilsner there. So the uh, the Damascus a little uh, a little interesting uh, conglomeration there. It's it's got kind of a West Coast flavor profile with kind yeah. of a, a northeast ish mouthfeel. So kind of uh, it is. It's it's know, actually a very a very easy drinking um, for an IPA. Uh, mm-hmm. Not necessarily bitter, but it's got a little bit of that again. Like you said, some of that right. some of that citrus flavor profiles. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a good easy drinking beer. I, I like it. Fruity, you exactly. Know, not a lot lemony. of the piney or bitter mm-hmm. bitter hops. It in wasn't there, but, that, but yeah. uh, you know, a little bit of a haze on there. It's a, it's good stuff, definitely. Absolutely. But of course, we have some awesome side. From Treehorn, yes, today, we do. Because we're talking cider, guys. What uh, I see a lot of colors over there, so we've got a decent variety of sample, correct? Yeah, yeah, we've got about six uh, six varieties here today. Okay, yeah. Yep. Do I see Triablo there? That's the that's the spicy cider, right? Yes, that's it right. Is. Okay. Excellent. Very cool. We're definitely going to get into those then. We'll that's, do it. Uh, that's good stuff. So, yeah, we'll open those during the uh, during the interview process. But uh, first, let's go ahead and check out what's happening in this week's headlines. What's in the news? The beer guys have the scoop. Extra, extra, read all about it. Time for headlines. And it looks like uh, there are some things going on in the beer world. In fact, uh, we've got a buyout to talk about, uh, Clown Shoes. Uh, our very, very, very first interview before we actually were on the air was Clown Shoes. Do you remember that? Episode zero. Episode zero, zero. Yes. So actually, they've been uh, sold, um, but not to uh, one of the big guys. They've actually been sold to a craft beer company, Harpoon, I, uh, as, uh, Harpoon? They, as they say okay. up there in Boston. All it's right. Harpoon, actually. So uh, so good for them. It's going to give them a little bit more exposure, of course. Uh, Harpoon, one of the larger uh, breweries, craft breweries around yeah. the area. So and, and they actually have a parent company, right? The Harpoon does. Yes, that's so correct. So. so kind of a big company there. I, you know, I think it's interesting to see the the sort of trend we're seeing with brewers buying other brewers. Maybe yes. maybe that's the changing tide of buyouts and sellouts. I like that. A little yeah. more collaboration, a little bit less uh, kind of selling out to the big guys, but uh, but we'll see. So uh, one of my favorite beers of all time uh, is coming out again this year's release. We can't get it in Georgia or Alabama, but it's another beer from the Northeast. Sam Adams Utopias is making its right. debut this year, too. So Technically a beer. Technically Aaron, a beer. So. And I think there was nothing more delightful than when we uh, served, or when you served your Utopias to the Nappy Roots crew. That and they was had fun. no idea what they were. Time there. Once they got over the shock of what it was, I think all, all of them enjoyed it. Yeah. I think that they would love the fact that a lot is being made of that being illegal in 12 states. It's uh, a technicality. I, it's illegal because it's clouded classified as a beer as a beer right yes. if it was it was a liquor if it all they need to do is distill utopias and we'll be able to buy it but since it's a beer we can't exactly yeah. we'll have to get through other means what's so. the abv on that 20 it's something? it's like yeah it's like yeah. a 43 proof or something like yeah. that 28 percent. 28 percent there <laughs> and we've got uh one more story that i want to talk about uh, and this could kind of get into it to an issue there's a tampa bay pizza restaurant that's kind of come under fire uh it's known for its craft beer so there's the tie-in but it's called hampton station and they have not allowed they've uh, actually banned children from their restaurant slash brewery i want to go eat at that pizza place and you know what listen i've got three kids yes i have three young kids I love my children, but I know their limits. Sure. And sure. 70% of the time, they're good, but 30% of the time, they're wild. And you know what? I, I try to be cognizant of other people's space, and I really want to let other people enjoy their time without having my crazy kids running around like crazy people. So I do not take them to bars, breweries, those bars types of and things. And stuff. No. Thank so, you, Aaron. You're welcome. Thank I mean, you But I will say that it was very cool. When I went to the Great Lost Bear in Portland, Maine uh, a couple weeks ago, they actually had a separate section for kids. So they basically had family seating in one side of the of the restaurant, but then the other side was the traditional bar. So we were basically okay. sequestered from um, the, the area. So if you were an adult wanted to drink and just hang out at the bar, you were nowhere near crazy screaming kids. So that was, uh, okay. that was kind of you a know, good thing. You know, like yeah. Wild yeah. Heaven yeah. here does uh, Sundays. Mm-hmm. Are family friendly, so not you know the rest of the week it's twenty one and up. Sundays yeah. they do family friendly, so at least I know when not to go. Exactly, to you know. But I, but so. I, I always think it's, it's again about experience, and as a parent, I think you need to be responsible enough to know what your kids' limits are, and just kind of set that example for them. And and you know what, if you want to go out and enjoy a beer, that's what grandmas and babysitters are for. So right. you know, can go ahead and do that. So. All yes, right. Sir. Well, we need to take a quick break. We'll be back very soon to talk cider with Treehorn Cider. You'll listen to the Beer Guys Radio Show, and we'll be back right after this. Have you ever thought about owning your own brewery? 
but don't know what it takes to get one built? We're CRL Contracting, and we build breweries. We are the most experienced contractors in the state of Georgia when it comes to building new breweries and tap rooms or expanding current breweries. If you've been to Orpheus, Second Self, or Scofflaw, then you know what kind of work we can do. Just give us a call at 678-546-3382 or visit crlcontracting.com for more information. CRL Contracting. We build breweries. CRLcontracting.com. If you want more craft beer conversation, you have to check out our podcast, Drink This Beer. This week, we're talking Beijing Brewing with China's Jing A. Well, the whole scene, I think, when it first started off uh, five, six, six years ago, was very expat heavy in the very beginning. That's just not craft beer. I mean, a lot of the things in Beijing and China, new concepts that are brought over, it's usually, you know, kind of the expat community that kind of latches onto that first. That's kind of what happened with both, you know, craft beer in general as well as Jing A when we started up. And then over the last five or six years, we've seen a real turnaround where in the 1949 tap room, which is our first tap room we started, we're probably running, you know, 60 to 7 percent local Chinese now and 30 percent expat. So it's really kind of gone the other way sometimes. To be honest, we love the whole variety of beer. We also brew, brew, we brew our pale ales and browns, we brew Belgian saisons and really everything. Don't forget, that's the Drink This Beer podcast, available on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcast. Check it out, beerguysradio.com. We are Reformation Brewery, celebrating the reformer in you. Locally crafted within the renowned Etowah watershed of Woodstock, Georgia, Reformation creates yeast-forward brews full of aroma and flavor crafted to last. Come see us in beautiful Woodstock, Georgia, for a tour and tasting of unique brews that you can't find anywhere else. Reformation Brewery. Set beer free. ReformationBrewery.com Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I meant to do that. Now, back to the Beer Guys radio show. And welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show, beerguysradio.com. Coming up in a little bit, we'll have a homebrewing talk with the American Homebrewers Association. But right now, we are going to switch to some cider. We have got the crew from Marietta's Treehorn Cider, cider here with us, uh, Justin Pierce and uh, Andrew Wheeler are in the studio. So congratulations, guys. Well, congratulations. Well, thank you for joining us today. Congratulations. Congratulations for making it to the studio. Every day. With Buckhead traffic some days, I I have to (laughs) to guess sometimes. So, yeah. So, cool. Well, thanks again for for joining us. And uh, we cracked open a a cider of yours during the break. Uh, Which which one do we do here? That is our Miyabi. It's a uh, Japanese-inspired cider. Uh, It's got uh, shiso and yuzu. And uh, shiso is a Japanese herb. It's a member of the mint family. And uh, yuzu is just uh, basically a uh, Japanese variety of lemon. Okay, Very cool. I like it. It's tasty. It's I see an Asian influence. Brian, how about you? I know you're uh, Asians and, and all those foods. Uh, do you see uh, an influence? Do you get that essence from it? Yeah, it kind of it reminds me of something I've had somewhere, and I can't quite put my finger on it. Yeah. I think it's the combination of the two elements. Yeah. <laughs> you know. mm-hmm. It's a familiar taste, right? Uh, if what's unique about it? I mean, there's really nothing out there yeah. like that. I mean, right. If what's, you know, I sometimes call Andrew a mad scientist, because he comes up with some pretty unique combinations uh, of, of flavors, and I don't we are not aware of anybody else that's done anything. Like the that. only one yeah. I know that uh, has used yuzu before is Red Brick. They had a yuzu IPA that they made a few months ago. There's actually a small handful that have used yuzu. Yeah, I know there are a few, things, but, uh, but not, I, definitely not insider that I've right. seen. Yeah, and no, so. oh right, and no, uh, no shisu, yeah. shiso. Yeah, exactly. Shiso is so. the unique part. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Yeah. So, guys, what, uh, Brian? We don't want to hear it, man. I saw you go on <laughs> the mic. We don't want to hear. it. Do you have <laughs> something you'd like to add, Brian? Uh, I was going to say that the uh, the Red Brick one was yuzu and matcha. I think it was a combination okay. Yeah, well, that was so tasty keep stuff. Keep that in mind. So. Yeah. All right. So, guys, what uh, what got you involved in cider? Um, well, it was uh, one of our partners works for the EPA and was at a sustainability conference and uh, toured a small cidery, came back here, saw no one was doing it, and so asked if we were going you know, to be interested. And, you know, we were like, well, let's not just jump in quite yet. Let's start playing around with it. And we started getting into cider, drinking a lot of uh, French and Spanish and English ciders and kind of got into it that way and started doing small batches in our basement. And after some, you know, really, really awful, awful, dreadful cider. We did a lot of yeah. research to figure out how to do it properly. And uh, then we actually started cracking out some really good cider, and uh, we decided, um, you know, what the hell, let's go for this. I was uh, I was working at Turner Broadcasting at the time in uh, log management, 
the oh you were yeah, so you were logging logging tapes and yeah. all that kind of fun stuff yeah. yes yeah so I I've was been there yeah I was not thrilled with that particularly so I was looking for to get out I'd been uh, I'd been working weekends at a, a butcher shop in Marietta called Haywoods mm-hmm. breaking down whole hogs cheddar yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah 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 <laughs> yeah yeah this stuff's awesome so uh, I was doing all that I was doing that kind of stuff and I was looking for something with you know a little bit of a creative outlet to get into and. Uh, so this was a really good fit and uh, really started to get into it and really enjoy ciders uh, beyond, you know, the super sweet mass market stuff. Excellent. Well, cool. And you were in healthcare IT before you uh, made this switch. Is that right. correct? Well, yeah. And it's, you know, there's a lot of time spent between all of us and trying to get this uh, kind of going for us. Yeah. And, you know, this, the, the partner that came up with the idea to begin with, I mean, she really kind of latched on to, you know, the sustainability side of it. And, uh, you know, it's a, it, overall for the environment, it's a very positive thing. Um, you know, there's not a lot of waste that goes into these products and, mm-hmm. you know, uh, from everything else. And so that attracted me to it. And uh, my wife and I went on a honeymoon. We did a, you know, stint in Europe uh, for a little while. And we saw some, some really pretty amazing ciders, you know, that were in Europe. And we, we, you know, when the idea was presented to us, it was like, you know, we, we can take some of these great, great ideas and, and really kind of spread the word of, of, you know, what a good dry cider should be. And that's really kind of how we 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 dove into it head first. It was we we really found an opportunity uh, that that especially within the southeast to to bring something that really I don't think anybody really had yet. Uh, and you know, with Andrew's creativity, I mean, there's a lot of pretty unique stuff that I think we brought to the market since that we're really proud of. Like one with uh, some sort of chilies in it, correct? That right. we're going to yeah. triablo. I haven't ca- ca- cracked that one that? open yet, but I did crack open the ginger infused one though. That's I going just poured that. I haven't so, tasted yes. it yet. So, talking about sustainability, we've uh, we've heard that a lot more lately uh, from brewers and you know and chefs and everybody. You know, there's a big focus on that. So, from the cider side, uh, you know what um, what really speaks to the sustainability uh, from cider making. For, for one thing, um, you have yeah, we don't have nearly the amount of water usage that like a brewery would have, so you cut back on a lot of that there. Uh, in addition, uh, there's not a lot of waste as far as from uh, when the apples are pressed, all the the spent apple pomace, the you know the pulp, uh, gets sent off to farms and is either used as animal feed or is composted and put back into the earth. So you have a lot of that kind of circular kind of thing where you don't. Um, there's just not a lot of waste product to come out of it. It's everything gets reused and gets put back into the system. So uh, it's really good for that sort of thing. And most uh, most apple orchards don't actually use a whole lot of uh, fertilizers and that sort of thing. Generally, uh, you want to deprive the apples a little bit of nutrients so they get denser and sweeter. If you give them too much fertilizer, they just go really big and watery, and you don't really get any flavor out. What of nice them. sweet apples mm-hmm. there, right? Yeah. Well, okay. Now is um with the waste, what do you call it? The the stuff that's left after you press. Pomace. Yeah, pomace. Oh. So with the pomace, is there any human consumption use for that? Like I know brewers will use spent grain sometimes for baking or or things like that. Um, not that I've seen for like human consumption, but it's frequently used. Uh, it's really frequently used for animal feed, whether that's uh, pigs and cows primarily. Uh, but yeah, a lot of it, uh, a lot of it goes into compost for, you know, getting sent back to farms and put, you know, spread on the fields and that sort of thing. And that's, I mean, that's one of the great things about it is, uh, you know, we're almost all the partners are from Georgia um, originally. And then for those of us that are, they've been here most of their lives at this point too. And uh, it, as a Georgia business, you know, as a Georgia, you know, small small business. We want to continue to support other, you know, Georgia small businesses. And, um, you know, we source the greater majority of everything that we use through Georgia. Uh, so it helps us continue that whole circular relationship, you know, the orchards and the apples to, to us to produce the, the cider and it goes to the consumer and continues that, that, you know, positive swing. Yeah. And then it really makes a lot of sense, Justin, when you talk about that, because Georgia is such a great ag state anyway yeah, definitely you know you've got up north you've got some of the colder climates where you can get the apples and the grapes and those types of things but then down south you've got a huge variety as well so it only makes sense really to be as local as possible yep. Yep. yeah and i guess it makes it easier to do you know with, with cider because we do have like you mentioned a lot of apples in north georgia and stuff oh yeah tremendously right? so, yeah i mean there's there's quite a few big orchards up there and you know we work with uh you know a couple of different uh Sources for our for our product. So. Now, do you do you have an orchard? I know with some of the other ciders we've talked about, 
you know, the farm winery exemption in that. If I remember right, you guys are not a farm winery, correct? That's correct. That's correct. Okay. Yeah. We, um, that's kind of my responsibility in the organization overall is to, to manage some of the regulatory side of things. And uh, through direction of the Department of Revenue um, and just interpretation of kind of the, you know, the interesting situation that exists within our state. I don't sure. know if I want to yeah. go further than that. Yeah. Um, oh, we can go further yeah. than that. We <laughs> do. We'll talk. Yeah. yeah we, we, provide, we were provided guidance. We don't own, you don't own an orchard and uh, we didn't have the resources at the time to pursue that direction. So, uh, according to law, we should have a malt beverage license. So what that puts us into is, uh, you know, so some of the benefits of, of that and also puts us into the community, which I've been really a big fan of, of working closely with the breweries. And, uh, you know, I saw that you all had Hunter Hill on a couple of weeks back. Mm-hmm. I'm a very big fan of what he did um, and is continuing to do to support, you know, the, the, the jobs that are um, behind the small businesses that are the breweries and giving them the opportunity to grow and expand. And, uh, you know, we, by being a part of the malt beverage community, quote unquote, even though we are not, um, you know, we, we able, we were able to, you know, be a part of that voice and be a part of that message. So, awesome. Well, I've got some more questions I want to ask you on that, but first we need to take another break. We are talking to Treehorn Cider. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show, and we'll be back in just a moment. I'm Spencer Nix with Reformation Brewery, and you're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. The Beer Guys are back right after this. Saren and Tim, the beer guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock and Alpharetta are always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy, Aaron. See, they've got 18 of them. As for the truck part, well, that's when it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks daily, so that way you're getting a different menu every day. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and coming soon to Duluth in 2018. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guys sent you. Craft beer forged with a reverence for tradition and new styles that start a revolution. Ironmonger Brewing. The brewers at Ironmonger pride themselves in being masters of barrel-aged, hoppy, and sour beers. They invite you to their tap room to taste and see. And coming soon, Ironmonger's Barrel Room featuring live entertainment. Keep up to date on all things Ironmonger by liking them on Facebook. Ironmonger Brewing, establishing a new standard in craft beer. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You passed out cigarettes for a smoke on on Earth Day. You installed speed bumps on the handicapped ramps. And most recently, you dumped 100 pounds of meat on a peaceful vegan protest. Oh, come on. That was way more than 100 pounds. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. And welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Come check us out at BeerGuysRadio.com. Now, Aaron... Some folks may not know this, but today is actually a holiday. Yes, it is. It is National Homebrew Day. So encouraging everybody to go out, homebrew, learn to homebrew. So, And we actually talked to Gary Glass. He is the director of the American Homebrew Association about National Homebrew Day. So let's listen in. And we're here now with Gary Glass. He is the director of the American Homebrewers Association. Here to talk about, well, Learn to Homebrew Day, which is today. Gary, thanks for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure. Great to be with you. Well, tell us a little bit about how this uh, Learn to Homebrew Day got started. This is our 19th year of doing it. It started uh, back in the the late 90s with the idea being that, you know, homebrewers, well, for for one thing, homebrewers are very friendly people and they they really like to uh, uh, help out other people with with homebrewing. So we wanted to create a day in which basically have the homebrewing community get back to to homebrewing and and introduce new people to to the hobby. Yeah, and it's interesting because uh, so many brewers that we talk to on the Beer Guys radio show, of course, got their start homebrewing, whether it's a Mr. Beer Kid that they got for Christmas or that their next door neighbor, you know, was a homebrewer and he invited them over. So really the industry kind of relies on this homebrewing as kind of an apprenticeship uh, a course or something like that. Exactly. Like most of the breweries that are getting started today get started by, by homebrewers. So 
it's it's absolutely part of that that culture and and the reason why we have so many different beer styles and, and breweries in this country is this humbering culture that we have here in the United States. Yeah, and it's funny because it, there's been so much innovation. Folks are are really kind of getting in there, getting inspired, and uh, there's so much variety and so much uh, innovation in the craft beer world because uh, you got your start home brewing. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I think innovation is absolutely the appropriate word. Uh, you know, when we when we survey homebrewers, the the number one reason they cite for for homebrewing is because it gives them an opportunity to customize beers to their own personal taste. And it's it's like an artistic expression. You're you're making something that's that's unique. Uh, and but but the beautiful thing about beer is that. It's really easily shared with friends, and, and friends usually like it when you give them beer. Free beer is the best beer. That's what I always say. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. You, you haven't had any of my batches of homebrew, so I guess you can't you can't say anything because it's not pretty. That's uh, that's it. <laughs> anyway, uh, Gary Glass again uh, from the American Homebrewers Association. Today is Learn to Homebrew Day. What exactly are some of the things that are going on across the country? Across the country and, and really across the world, we have sites set up with homebrewers who are teaching other homebrewers how to how to make beer at home. You, you can go onto our website, homebrewersassociation.org, and, and find one of these locations. Or really, just take the day as a as an inspiration to get into the hobby yourself. And um, you know, we have plenty of tutorials and things like that on our website that can get you started all on your own. The first thing to do is find a local homebrew shop and, and get in there and get the very basic equipment you need, which isn't actually all that extensive, and mm-hmm. then. Uh, uh, an ingredient kit and go ahead and do it. It's so funny because a lot of folks may be a little bit intimidated by starting their own beer, but honestly, it's not that hard. Right, exactly. I mean, the most basic brewing methods where you're brewing like an extract batch from an extract kit, I mean, really, it's not anything more than making a batch of soup from concentrate on your stovetop. Just a lot of cleaning involved afterwards, though. Yes, that is a, a very important <laughs> aspect of it, making sure everything's clean. But even that, it's really not that hard. You just have to be diligent about it. Gary, anything I might have missed? Just want to reiterate just how easy easy it is to get into homebrewing and how rewarding it is once you get started. You're making your own beer, and then you're also being part of this larger craft brewing community. So it's tremendously rewarding and quickly uh, becomes a passion for those people who get into it. And I've always said that craft beer people are the best people. So. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, <laughs> Plus, you drink beer with them, so you know there's that, too. Right. But, but no, it's a great collaborative group, and it's a lot of fun. Again, to spend a couple of hours just hanging out, it's almost by a campfire type of a thing. Have a couple of beers, talk about life, and, uh, you know, and while you're doing it, you're brewing a beer. It's, it's fantastic. Excellent. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, that was, uh, again, Gary Glass from the American Home Brewers Association, homebrewersassociation.org. You have more information about National Learn to Homebrew Day, which is today. But it's Cider Day at the Beer Guys Radio Show. It is Show, Cider Day so here. Saturday in, the, in si- the house. Okay, yes. Cider day. That's that's what beautiful. What a day. Okay. I should <laughs> stop park, singing and get back to singing. talking exactly. and drinking, right? That's so, right. So, guys, we wanted to talk just a little bit more about the laws. We could, I'm sure with all of us being passionate about that, we could probably just sit and talk about that the whole time, but would probably bore the people listening to the show. So, uh, you know, we talked a little bit. I asked you kind of uh, off mic here about the uh, the pros to not being a farm cidery. So there are a few benefits for you and you kind of helped you expand or grow a little bit more that way, correct? Yeah, having the relationship uh, with the distributor has opened up a lot of doors for us in areas of the state that, you know, especially for, you know, a, a start out cidery getting going, it's going to take a lot more effort. You know? So we we have a and like we were saying off mic, a, a great fan base all throughout the state and in, in particular in Athens and in Savannah, in areas of the of the state we have a really very hard time to reach. And, um, you know, we're happy that we can see, you know, growler shops and, and bars and different restaurants as far down as, you know, Valdosta and South Georgia that, uh, you know, constantly write back to us and say how much they love what we're doing. It's a really cool thing. Yeah, and it's a unique feature for yeah. you guys because, again, um, you know, having the farm exemption, you self-distribute, but that limits your, your expansion. And so I see you guys everywhere. I mean, I see you guys on shelves all over the place. So so that's really cool. So so that's definitely a good uh, benefit of that. Big perk. However, uh, one one drawback, though, is that uh, I noticed that all of your your beer, your, your ciders are 5.9%. And uh, yeah. there's a reason for that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the way we're uh, the way we're regulated, we're classified as a malt beverage. And just it, really the laws haven't been really updated since roughly prohibition. So. Uh, when the uh, when beer uh, when the ABV on beer uh, got bumped up to 14, we were kind of left by the wayside because there was really nobody doing it at the time. So it didn't occur to anybody to go, oh well, we've got this you know classification for cider in this range. 
we should just go ahead and bump that up too. It was just kind of forgotten about and left by the wayside. So uh, we're currently, hopefully, maybe it'll change. But uh, at the moment, uh, we can only produce up to 5.9 and still be in our tax class and uh, still be regulated the way we are. And, uh, you know, if we were... We could get classified as one, but then our tax class totally changes. And in Georgia, there's no uh, there's no designation for a winery to have a tasting room unless you're a farm winery. Uh, so that would uh, severely severely limit us. Mm. Fun with laws, yes. Fun with <laughs> yeah. alcohol right. laws, absolutely. And uh, you did mention that there are some you may not go brewing, you know, fourteen percent ciders across the board, but there are some creative things you could do with a, a little ABV leniency, correct? Yeah, yeah. We've, we've, we've explored, uh, you know, with the, with the legislature, different options. And, you know, as they've become more open to reviewing these laws, as we've seen with the great work done uh, by Hunter Hill in the last, you know, year or two, um, you know, we're really, we're feeling that the state is going to be much more open to those revisions. I mean, at the federal level, we're a wine. And at the state level, we have to be a malt beverage because we didn't have the resources to, to have a, an orchard as part of what we opened. But, uh, you know, the passion for the product still comes through, and we still use Georgia Juice. We still work with the orchards here. Um, and I think, you know, we're very, very proud of what we create. And we, we would love the flexibility to do more. He said they use Georgia Juice. And if you don't already have a peach sire called George, Georgia Juice, yeah, I think that needs to happen, man. We we do have a uh, a peach cider. Uh, we we didn't have any left for you, uh, but it's the fastest uh, selling yeah, cider that we yeah, had. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sold out really quick. That was yeah. uh, that one's called Peaches on Regalia, uh, and that was just uh, we're going to do twice as much next year. But uh, we had uh, with the bad peach harvest this year in Georgia, yeah. we yeah. had we had trouble even getting some several farms to even call us back. Uh, so, awesome. yeah, so yeah, we, yeah. we managed to get just enough to do a batch this year, but we, we plan to double that. <laughs> next time we come back, we'll bring some for you. It's outstanding. Good. But I tell you what, the, the one that I'm really enjoying, we just opened this up, uh, it's your Origin, which uh, is a gin botanical infused cider. Mm-hmm. That one has a really unique character because the finish of it, more than anything else, really kind of is something unique that I haven't had before. It's really, it's really nice. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, that one's, uh, you know, we use... Uh, uh, juniper, coriander, angelica root, and citrus peel, and that uh, the angelica root really comes through on the back end and gives you a nice—I uh, don't want to say licorice kind of taste, but it's a kind of earthy kind of. Yeah, uh, I see what you're saying when you say that. Yeah, mm-hmm. that kind of essence of the licorice root. It is, yeah, but so, it's not. Yeah, yeah, it's nothing that's kind of the you know obviously the obvious licorice and this flavor, but it's just got a little bit of that earthiness and it's mm-hmm. it's really delicious. So we'll take a quick break right now. Uh, we're talking with Treehorn Ciders, Justin Pierce, and Andrew Wheeler. BeerGuysRadio.com. We'll be back right after this. Time for the hot list. The Beer Guys have the scoop on what's going on next week. Brought to you by CRL Contracting. We build breweries. CRLcontracting.com. That's hot. Aaron, we've got all kinds of amazing stuff going on in Georgia this week. Plenty to check out. Tomorrow, Sunday, Variant Brewing and From the Earth continue their grand openings up in Roswell. We got to preview both of those locations, and they are both amazing. So go up there and check them out. OTP is the place to be. On Wednesday, a little quiet through the week, Aaron, but on Wednesday we have Team Trivia at Your Pie Perimeter and Tacos and Trivia up at Reformation. On Friday we have a chili cook-off benefit and a Veterans Day thank you at the Southern Brewing Company. And uh, down in Hapeville at Arches there's beer and bingo. So you can check that out on Saturday. Their Concrete Jungle bought a release at Wild Heaven. A super cool project they did there. They uh, worked with Concrete Jungle that urban foragers for fruits and that. So they've got some fruits that they got uh, from them. So check that out. Check out the beer. We have Southern Sky second anniversary up in Kennesaw. There's also a brewer, Breweriana, which is a hard word to Easy say. Easy to say. Breweriana collect. There's a brewery collectible show. At the Greater Good go. Barbecue in Tucker, we have Butcher and Brew Fest over in Alpharetta. So check that out for a full list of events and all the goings on in Georgia as well as Alabama. Check out our calendar events at BeerGuysRadio.com. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Next Friday is Hawaiian Shirt Day. So, you know, if you want to, go ahead and uh, wear a Hawaiian shirt and jeans. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. 
And welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Follow us on the socials at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Beer Guys Radio. We're talking cider this week. Absolutely. We have the good guys from Treehorn Cider and Marietta in here with us, sharing their amazing cider and cider knowledge with us this week. Yes, and we uh, we tackled the Triablo El during Triablo. the break. That was awesome. So uh, this one, uh, again, it's it's uh, got, some, got some chili flavor, as the name implies. Uh, in Mexican, it's known as what is it? The Triablo. Yes, that's what which it's is called. Spanish for Spanish the for Triablo. The... Yes, in Mexican. <laughs> in this, I'm gonna edit that out. That's that Four was segment. terrible of me. Yes. Four segments always an interesting segment here, guys, because again, we've been drinking. We've been for, drinking for three yeah, segments exactly, there, so. and it just kind of goes downhill from here. Yeah. So, but it's good. So, and yeah. they recommend we did you uh, shake the can and put your nostril directly over the opening yes. <laughs> when you open it. That's re- that's the recommended way to enjoy El Triablo. Yeah, that's to the experience. Yeah. That's, it does yeah. have the go. experience. There you go. No, but, uh, but this pain. is nice. I mean, the aromatics are, are quite are quite there. I mean, you, know, yeah. you get a lot of that pungent uh, chili flavor or aroma there. But this taste of it, though, it doesn't give you a lot of that heat. It gives you a lot more, like, like we said, that smoky chili vegetable the chili, taste. And the it's not chili just the, flavor, right. Yeah, it's not just heat that's uh, that's there. It's a little bit of that flavor, and I, I really enjoy this. But there is some heat. So it's there not, is, Because yeah. I've, I've had some. It's kind of like... Either you get all the heat or you get flavor with no heat, and it tastes odd. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, chili's got to have a little heat, you know, yeah, to yeah. get the essence of what they are. But uh, the, you use a combination of three chilies in this with habanero, jalapeno, and hatch chilies. Yeah, and hatch chili is the, the predominant flavor in there. That's the, uh, that's the main one. Hatch. That's what we use the most of because uh, we've got um, a couple of our partners have ties to New Mexico. One is, grew up in New Mexico is from there, and uh, our former – Ciders with me, uh, Mallory, uh, went to school there, and they both really wanted to do something with hash chili. So she really took the lead on this one and, uh, you know, brought this around for us. So uh, it's come out great, and everybody really seems to love it. It's uh, one of our one of our more favorite uh, favorite varieties. Cool. Yeah. Now, uh, one of the things that we like to talk about is, of course, not only what uh, it is inside the can, but what's outside of the can as well. Uh, I think sometimes uh, to kind of get that edge when it comes to bottle shops, you kind of have to have this, a distinctive uh, uh, marketing a distinctive look uh, for your cans, and you definitely have that. Um, how was that developed, and how was your marketing plan developed with that? Yeah, that's a really good question. So one of our partners, um, this is actually not his first small business to get off the ground. He has a, a production company called ECG Productions, and uh, he has uh, some excellent resources that we've been able to put together to uh, do a variety of things, um, you know, video for our site. Um, we had a successful uh, Kickstarter campaign that we launched and ran, um, the video production was done by his team, and through those relationships, he was uh, he introduced us to Bart Sasso, uh, his company Gentleman Works. And uh, Bart, uh, this is original art from you know Bart. We 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 give him concepts and what we're trying to create, and he comes back with proofs. And um, you know everything that we've done since our very first promo flyer was has been uh, through him. And uh, we, we're we couldn't be happier with the outcome, and they're just amazing. Yeah, they've been fantastic. We love we yeah. love the work they do for us. They, yeah, yeah they can, I, I almost like you know the the tree horn itself is kind of have almost a throwback type of of a font to it. I'm getting to font talk now on beer guys radio, <laughs> and uh, but, then, but they also have like again the 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 distinctive line art. It's almost like a throwback to the to the old botanical prints that they used to have, mm-hmm. and so but it's it's got a modern touch to it. And I think it's it's really cool, and it's it's always stood out to me. I've noticed it uh, when I go to the bottle shops and those types of things that uh, that your 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 can art definitely is is distinctive. So it's Thank so it's neat, you. definitely. That's it. You know, we've talked about a lot with, with artwork and that. You know, some people take an approach of, uh, you know, everything unique. There's a lot of different, uh, a lot of different angles you can go. But I, I am a fan of seeing something and being able to recognize it. You know, when you're across the the store and you see, if you saw four or five brands of Treehorn lined up, you're going to know that's Treehorn. You're yeah. going to know it from a good ways away. So that's good. Now we've sampled quite a few of your ciders today, and we just cracked the. The dry cider, which I'm assuming is kind of your uh, your standard there. That's uh, our so flagship, right? Tell yep. us about uh, tell us about the dry cider. So uh, yeah, the dry cider is a um, sort of uh, we take uh, we really take a wine wine making approach to our cider making, and uh, we actually make this with a white wine yeast. Uh, a lot of the a lot of ciders use a champagne yeast uh, to ferment. We find that champagne yeast in general strip out a whole lot of flavor and don't give you a whole lot of whole lot in return whereas uh the white wine yeast we use gives you a lot of nice esters a nice kind of fruity kind of essence to it that um isn't necessarily a product of 
the apple juice that we're fermenting, but is just kind of uh, a byproduct of the uh, you know the yeast metabolize, uh, metabolizing sugars. And one um, one just one thing to add to that too, because Andrew made reference to you know in the early days we we did a lot of yeast testing. I mean mm-hmm. a lot, and you know sure. some turned out better than others for sure. Uh, but it was amazing to see the impact in the final flavor of the cider that these different test yeasts would come back to, and this is why we picked it. Yeah, we did. We, we tested right around a hundred yeasts um, yeah. before we launched. Uh, That's a lot so, of yeast yeah. testing there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it absolutely. Was a, ton, a ton lot of, of cider drinking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I would have at least eight, uh, you know, five gallon carboys going at a time in my basement uh, when we were doing testing and getting getting off the ground. You know, if you don't brew or if you haven't brewed in that, you wouldn't realize how much difference a yeast would make. Oh, you know, geez. there's yeah. and there's something AB and Bev has got some grief for this among many other things, but they've got a commercial going where they talk about the four essential ingredients in their beer. And it's water, rice, barley, barley. hops, and rice. And they don't That's mention right. yeast at all yeah. as being an ingredient, but it's critical. It changes oh, yeah. the beer. We've done mm-hmm. on homebrew batches, we've brewed the exact same beer and used two different yeasts, and you get two totally different beers out of it. Oh, that, yeah. You know, just with the yeast change up. So, you know, the, like I said, trying through 100 of them, I'm, that's 100, I'm sure, very different batches of cider you have. Oh, yeah, yeah, vastly different. And I mean, we try to control for it as much as possible. We actually used, uh, for all of our test batches uh, to get consistent juice, we were actually using. Uh, just apple juice from Costco, mm-hmm. uh, the Kirkland's brand <laughs> juice. Uh, it's, there you go. It's it's always the same. So any yep. differences you know is from the yeast. You right. know it's not, yeah. you know, okay, this batch of juice was a little bit different because we have to control for that when we do our batches. We're not using Costco juice when we make of our course. big mass produced product. But every batch is going to be a little different because the juice is going to be a little bit different. But that allowed yeah. us to control for yeah. Okay, what what does this yeast bring to the table? What is it giving us? What is it taking away? You know, so you yeah. can you so can, can kind of say way. like, oh, this one's drier yeah. than this one. I want to use this one, or maybe yeah, you know, it just controls kind of... so much of the outcome yeah. that you know, once you understand what it can do for you, then you can really hone it with the the apples that you put in. You know, I mean, everything mm-hmm. has different flavor profiles that then go into that final blend, and you know, we've got the right. I think the secret sauce for the combination for our dry cider that is a great mix. But it took a lot of testing. <laughs> yeah, a lot sure. of work. Yes, did, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Well, gents, uh, we've got to wrap up this conversation. Um, if it, people want to get a hold of you guys or kind of follow along, what's the best way to do that? Facebook uh, is where we're the most active. Facebook and Instagram, uh, everything that we put out there, all our new releases, any news updates about events going on at Cidery, check us out on Facebook, uh, Treehorn Cider. Um, we're launching a new website shortly uh, that's going to have a little bit more active, you know, participation in what's going on in our tasting room. Okay. And uh, feel free, please, uh, you know, as, as part of the malt beverage community, since we had that license, we would love for people to come by and see us. You can pick up six packs and cases just like Woo-hoo. you can in uh, yeah. you can <laughs> just in like at the breweries. breweries. And yeah, we'd stuff. love to see you there. You might find one of us bartending from yeah, growl us so. an old bit. We're going to start rolling out some tasting yeah. room only stuff uh, yeah. pretty soon. We've uh, we've got a couple little test batches. We're just kind of tweaking. And, we'll be and you just opened your tasting room recently, correct? It just opened, yeah. Yeah, yeah just opened. Just a few weeks ago. Congratulations. Treehorn Cider, Justin Pierce, and Andrew Wheeler, thanks for being on the Beer Guys Radio Show. Great. Great. Thanks, thanks for having, having us. us. Yeah. Appreciate it. Now it's time, Tim. What? For a giveaway. A giveaway. Let's give away something. This is one of my favorite parts of the show, Aaron. It is. Besides all the alcohol drinking. Well, there's that, too. Yes. So our winner this week, Aaron, is Burke Shooter. So, Burke, thank you so much for subscribing to This Week in Georgia Beer. If you'll drop us an email to beerguys at beerguysradio.com, we will get your swag pack out to you. Also, check your newsletter every Friday because right. we also list the name of the winner in there with an easy link to contact us. So, Aaron, if others want to join in the fun and be entered to win cool beer and cider swag, That's how right. will they do that? Well, it's easy, Tim. All you have to do is visit beerguysradio.com, sign up for This Week in Georgia Beer, and you'll get a weekly newsletter with all the happenings in Georgia beer, and you'll also be entered to win that awesome weekly swag pack. And I've got an office full of cool swag that swag. I'm just itching to give away, Tim. YOLO. It's very good. Yes. Hashtag YOLO. So definitely sign up and, and again, enter and win. It's good times. Coming up next week, we're going to be talking to Gwinnett County's first brewery. Again, as a proud Gwinnettian, I'm very excited about this. So Chase Medlin from Slow Pour Brewing will join us in the studio next week. Very cool. That's good stuff. So in the meantime, check us out at BeerGuysRadio.com. And we're also on the socials. If you want more craft beer info, check out our podcast, too. Drink this beer, because this week we were interviewing the founders of Beijing's Jing A Brewery. That was a fun conversation. It was. So have a great week. Don't forget to drink local. We'll talk to you next time. Cheers.
Thanks for listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We're on demand via iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Always online at BeerGuysRadio.com. Aaron and Tim are back next week with more about the amazing world of craft beer. Cheers. Cheers.